So the whole point of the English Offensive was to gather a movement to put some sort of pressure on the government to listen to people's concerns regarding Islam and militant Muslims in their community. When we started highlighting this and creating demonstrations all around the country, a lot more people started uh, getting involved and getting mobbed up to join us. Because, And then obviously we noticed that our sympathy, uh, what, we, what, what we're actually worried about and concerned about, a lot of people are sharing them concerns as well. And that's why everyone started jumping on board. And then, uh, and then not too far into the English Defence, we had the outcry of the grooming scandal where um, police officers, councillors and government officials have been keeping uh, rape and grooming documentations enclosed since the early 90s where they've got evidence to send people to prison and stuff and they weren't doing anything about it. Why? Well, pardon? Why not? Well, the reason, well, it was actually proven in the J report that the reason that weren't, they weren't going to do anything about it was for the sake of community cohesion. So they wouldn't arrest the um, six sadistic Pakistani grooming men that were committing these crimes against young girls for the basis that they didn't want any upset or any outcry. That's basically why. And, so, and, and that's come out in the J report, and that's been proven over and over again. There was a recent report that came out, and the police in Rotherham have actually, the, the head um, officer, whatever his name is, he's actually um, publicly apologised for the failings during the Rotherham grooming scandal. And so, you know, and, and, and this is just another part of the issues that we had with Islam and militant Muslims in this country. It's, um, if, if, if any, every, any other man was commit such a sadistic crime, they'd be arrested and thrown in jail. But it's a two-tier policing system uh, like what Tommy's just recently done on his documentary Lawfare that he's put out it's one rule for them and one rule for another and that's another thing that we're witnessing so it was everybody to get behind so the English Offensive was to get behind a movement that could put some pressure on the government to make them start actually implementing the law and protecting their own people from the threat of militant Islam how bad has the grooming gangs bad Huge. It's national. It's gone everywhere. Have, have, have you read any? I mean, you must have had yeah, like. I've interviewed people on stuff, and it's a. Uh Okay, so the majority of the grooming, well my, well, my opinion is the majority, I mean, uh, Muslims are a four, four, well, back in the day when we were dealing with uh, English Defence League, the Muslim population was around about 3%. I think it sits at around about 4.2% right now. But on average, 97% of the grooming gang cases in this country have been from Pakistani Muslim men. Now, my opinion to that is the fact that Islam actually um, accepts this sort of behaviour against women. There's scriptures, I mean, I, I haven't got the Quran in front of me or the Hadith in front of me to completely re read them straight off to you. I don't know them off by heart. But within their scripture, there are parts where it tells men that they are allowed to sleep with children, that they are allowed to use them as sexual slaves. And I think when you've got this barbaric ideology um, being pumped for the last 1,600 years and it hasn't been changed one by a bit and for, we've got 1,600 years of evidence to learn by that this is the sort of actions that they've been doing because they were doing this to the Sikh girls in this country way, be, way before they were doing it to the English girls. They've been doing it to Sikh people, Hindu people uh, in India way before they even came to England. You know what I mean? This has been going on forever. This goes back to the times of the Raj. This goes, this goes back to the times of Muhammad. It's not stopped. It's been consistent within their religion. So my my, well, I kind of know the reason behind it is the fact it's the religion that's pumping this sort of behaviour. Yeah, because like I said, there are sex cases in every religion, every race. Yeah. But like you say, it's the majority. Why? So with the grooming gang saying their things, like they all, what's the plan and the meaning behind it? it it's disproportionate to the population when you've got, when you've got 97% of a crime being committed by 4% of the country. If anybody was supposed to be committing these sort of crimes in this country, well, well, the, the, the quota for any sort of crime in this country being committed is obviously going to be a white person because they 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 are majority of the country. That's just how it works. But when it comes to this grooming gang scandal, four percent of the country, ninety seven percent of the people committing these crimes are that four percent. Is something completely disproportionate. It's down to the fact that their religion uh, basically classes everybody as a second citizen they're supposed to submit they're supposed to bow down you're supposed to take their women as sexual slaves that's one of the ways that you get your message out there that's some that's one of the ways you rape them you impregnate them you build your army you're building more muslims that's what it's all about it's a complete totalitarian way of doing things a barbaric way of doing things but that's the way they get it done and it's not just it's not the first time in history they're just doing this right now we've got 1600 years of evidence documented evidence that they've been doing it so no no muslim can turn around and say oh we've never this has never happened before so you know what I mean what about the people who say Muslims are peaceful religion 
no, well, that's, that's ridiculous. Anybody who's saying Muslims are a peaceful religion is a complete liar. No, I'm not, I ain't got issues with Muslims, James. You know what I mean? I mean, I grew up in an area where you've got Sikh lads, black lads, who weren't really no Muslim lads around. You know what I mean? You've got English lads who all get on like a bloody ass on fire. You know what I mean? I can't turn around. If I was to walk out of here and every, anybody on the street was disrespecting a Muslim woman or a Muslim child, I'd smash that bloke straight in his face. You know what I mean? Me as a man, as a Sikh man, you protect women, you protect the vulnerable, you protect the children. And so it's not about the Muslim people. I personally think the Muslims are the first victims of Islam. But while, as long as that ideology is going on, we're going to keep having these problems in our country. Their ideology does not fit in with the values that this country has, has the true Christian values, which are the same sort of values as what Sikhs have. Islam does not fit in with that. And while that's going to be here, there's always going to be that shift. There's always going to be that head knot. We could just be banging heads against the wall. And that's why we're having these negative effects on our country, on, on our streets all over this country as we speak. I think that's what's happening in Ireland. 100%, yeah, definitely. I mean, we went out to Ireland last year. We were talking about the... It, them bringing them bringing people in these left illegal refugees are bringing them in and then we got told they were the, the irish government had done a deal with the british government and we're bringing them in from over here and we were there in killarney last we were there in dublin last friday sorry mate last february and uh, we were out there then we were talking about it they were doing demonstrations welcome all the refugees welcome all the refugees no one was paying attention to the people who actually live in the villages where the refugees are actually going to be planted and then when we went out when when tommy and the lads went out to killarney they saw the negative effect that they were having on their of the locals around there there were you know the girls were getting touched up the girls were getting raped blokes were getting slashed there was an old geezer in the middle of dublin he was walking his dog he's about 80 years old he got raped you know what i mean this is from the, the, the this is from these refugees that are predominantly coming from islamic countries and now that's why the lads have had enough of it in ireland and they're starting to really kick off and good on it's about time they should have been doing it last year when we went out there but now it's going up so thank god they're actually doing it finally i think it won't be too long until it starts happening on the streets of this country do you think it will happen here 100 percent, yeah because because the amount of refugees are just letting in day in, day out. I mean, they say the quota right now is one in 30 people is a legal refugee. You know what I mean? And they're just coming in, out, in. Well, they're coming in and they're never leaving. I've noticed it in my hometown. Um, I live in Nottingham. Um, a few council areas. I went to the tip yesterday and I saw some people that don't really look like the people that work at that tip. And I said to one of the lads, where are they from? He goes, oh, they're from the hotels. So they've even started giving them jobs now. Once you're giving them jobs, you give them NI numbers. You give them NI numbers, they pay taxes, you pay taxes, they're making them residents. And then it's like you're whacking them in hotels when we've got so many of our own that are starving, can't afford to heat the house, can't afford to put petrol in the car, can't afford to buy food for the fucking kids. And yet you're spending absolute millions on housing people that illegally shouldn't be here that shouldn't be here at all. It's just crazy. You know what I mean? It's yeah, crazy. It's... And, the, and then the fact, of the fact of the matter is it's not just that they're a burden on our finances, on this country, country's finances. You haven't got a bloody clue who they are. It could be any old person. Look at the acid attack that we had in London not long ago. The only reason you couldn't find the acid attacker was because he wasn't documented. He had no passport. He had no mobile phone number. Nobody knew who it was. That's why it took him so long to find. And then they finally found him. He was dead in the Thames or whatever. But you, they haven't got a clue who they're bringing here. They could be any old bloody terrorist. I've seen videos of people online saying they're coming over getting rid of the passport and they are legitimate terrorists from islamic states you know what i mean and it's just absolutely ridiculous you just, yeah. open, you just open up the drawbridge for any old cunt to come through see i'm all for like if there's war zones and women and children need to get away Same. by all means let them in and like i say if anybody's willing to come and work and graft and yeah. bring a positivity and, and do the right thing by yeah. all means go for it because i've traveled the world i've been everywhere yeah. and yeah. i would love to have a choice to move anywhere yeah 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 but i'm not over there fucking causing destruction Precisely, so if you're yeah. coming here and causing it and mm. not registering yourself and like I say, the health, the system, the healthcare system here is on its ass. Messed UK is on its ass. Precisely. Is it, like yeah. Scotland, the laws and everything in Scotland are a fucking mate, joke I've now. Heard, and I, I thought Scotland had a bit of balls about them. No, But no. it's the fucking yeah. weak. I know, The yeah. shit that's happening with uh, sentences for the sex cases and men dressing as fucking, uh, it, it, men it, it, dressing it, it, as it, it, women it, it, and getting put in women's prisons. Yeah. Like it's fucking sick.